We're in the first diving deep session today, and we have uh, three presentations over the next hour. We have uh, two presentations on volunteer stream monitoring and evaluation, and then I'll, I'll finish things up with a presentation on uh, evaluate or a survey to evaluate some of our aquatic invasive species prevention programs. So, uh, hi, I'm Tim Campbell. I'm a moderator for the session. I work for Wisconsin Sea Grant as our aquatic invasive species outreach specialist, and I'm happy to introduce uh, Rachel Pearson, who is currently serving as an AmeriCorps member uh, at the Arlington Echo Outdoors Education Center in Millersville, Maryland, and she uh, recently uh, completed her master's degree at the University of Vermont, and she will be talking today uh, about the motivations of volunteer stream monitors uh, in her area. So Rachel, take it away. Thank you, Tim. Um, thank you everyone for being here today. Um, I'm excited to get to kick us off this morning. Um, thanks for attending this, this session. So I'm going to read off a poll um, and you all can, can put your answers in the chat. Just to get an idea, I wanted to gauge the audience and who's with us here today. So the question is, how familiar are you with community science or citizen science and volunteer stream monitoring more specifically? Um, the, the responses I had prepared were, you know, I'm well versed in these topics. Um, I'm currently or I was previously a volunteer stream monitor. I'm somewhat familiar with community science and volunteer stream monitoring, or I'm not very, very familiar with either of these topics and I'd like to learn more. So um, you do not have to answer necessarily in the format of one of those responses, but I'm just curious of who's with us here today. So. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen now. <clears throat> um, Tim or Jeannie, are you able to tell me if anyone has typed in the chat? I don't wanna to start too soon if folks are, are wanting to take a minute to type in the chat. We have a few people uh, chiming in. Uh, some people are currently uh, stream monitors. Others are not very familiar, somewhat familiar. So I think a, a little bit of a mix. Okay, great. That's good to know. That's good to know. Thank you, Tim. All right, then I will just get started. Um, as Tim mentioned, I'm currently an AmeriCorps member. I am um, in Maryland with the uh, Arlington Echo Outdoor Education Center, um, serving as volunteer coordinator. And I know some folks may be familiar with Chris Stepanuck. She was my research advisor at the University of Vermont. So today I'm excited to be sharing with you our research from my time as a graduate student. And we were looking into what motivates people to volunteer, to be stream monitors. And we conducted an international study between the United States, Canada, and New Zealand. So with that, I thought I'd start with a brief introduction to stream monitoring around the world. And these are several terms that some of you may have, may, may have seen before um, that describe citizen science or community science more broadly. Um, this means public participation in scientific research. And as you can see, this is a version of a word cloud that Chris created. There are several terms that are used to describe um, public participation um, in scientific research. Things like lay monitoring or um, citizen observation. Um, we see in other countries such as in Canada, they tend to use community-based monitoring as the phrase to describe this type of science. In New Zealand, the groups we worked with were just simply called community groups. So I just wanted to give you all a, a little snip, snippet of some of the phrases that are used to describe this type of science. I tend to use volunteer monitoring or community science. So just know that if I say either of those terms today, that is, that's what I mean. In the United States, we know that there are 1700 volunteer water monitoring programs across the nation. This map was created in 2020. So we, we know that now there are several more groups than that. Um, and, and they're all across most of the states. Um, whereas in Canada, we know that there are over 200 community-based monitoring organizations, um, some of which have smaller subset groups within them. 
And in New Zealand, we know that there are more than 600 community environmental groups, 130 of which are Y care groups. Y uh, is the native Maori word for water. So those are water groups specifically. Um, and it is within those water groups that we worked with a handful of stream monitoring groups specifically. So what do we see in the literature as reasons that people participate in community science? Um, and this is broadly, this is not necessarily just water resource groups. Um, we see that people want to get involved because um, they wanna get outside and in nature as I think we all can relate to right now um, for recreational reasons, um, doing something they enjoy. Things like personal values, um, whether that be giving back to the community or um, you know, volunteering with a particular group for a certain reason. Personal growth, th something like learning or learning um, about local water resources. Um, social interactions, getting to do something with family and friends. Project organization, maybe, uh, you know, that would be the structure of the program. Maybe you get to work with uh, scientists at a university or federal or government agencies. We also see connection to place, uh, and, and this is something we incorporated in this research project, is this idea of people having a connection to the place either where they live or where the monitoring group is located and wanting to get involved for that reason. And across the board, we see that helping the environment and learning are the most common reasons that folks get involved with community science. So with this in mind, we also know that there are reasons people initially become involved versus reasons that people continue long term. And these are different. Um, so we see that the factors affecting initial participation tend to be more self related personal interests, things that promote the self or that um, have to do with uh, people's uh, ability to to learn um, individually, whereas factors that are contributing to long term participation tend to do more with um, relationships within the group and outside mentorships, um, things that come with getting to know your peers and the organization with which they work. And as I mentioned, place attachment um, is, is this idea of a bond between a person and a place. So I'd ask all of you to think about a place you have a special affinity for. It doesn't, you don't need to know why necessarily, but a place that you may feel um, particularly emotional toward or, or something that just feels special. Uh, you're likely attached to that place. And we wanted to know, are people attached to their monitoring site? And what can this mean for getting involved with community science groups? So the purpose and research questions, as I alluded to, um, does place attachment influence participants' decision to volunteer? Do motivations vary across demographics? And is there a variance in the top motivations among countries? So again, as I mentioned, we worked with the Alliance for Aquatic Resource Monitoring um, Alarm based out of Dickinson College in Pennsylvania, and the community monitoring groups were in the New York and Pennsylvania regions uh, of the Chesapeake Bay watershed shown in those orange circles. We also partnered with the Columbia Basin Watershed Network in British Columbia, Canada, over on the West Coast, um, within the Columbia River watershed, as well as three groups with the Stream Health Monitoring and Assessment Kit Program in New Zealand. And those groups were in the Auckland, Nelson, and Wellington regions, both in the North and the South Island. So we administered a survey online in the summer of 2019, so a couple years ago, to these groups and followed up with in-person interviews um, with a subset of survey participants asking questions ranging from their feelings toward their site to how many sites they monitor and um, how long it takes them to get to their site, as well as questions of place attachment, motivations, and actions as a result of being involved in these programs. What sort of things do people do after the fact? So we sent the survey to just over 230 total volunteers and 101 of them completed or partially completed the survey, which is about a 44% overall response rate. I'd like to start with the demographics, um, just so you all get an idea of who responded to this survey. Um, I'd like to direct your attention to these areas highlighted in yellow. Very similar to what we see in other studies of community science, 
first with age, a lot of these folks are, are retired and are of the older age group. Um, we saw almost an even split between male and female participants. When it came to level of education, most folks had held some sort of advanced degree. Again, something that we see commonly in community science um, and this is a, a separate conversation in and of itself. Um, most people either having a bachelor's degree or something uh, like a master's or a PhD. And finally, we did ask about race or ethnicity. These are maintained in the um, manner in which they're asked in each country. As you can see, um, most folks either identified as white or Caucasian or of European descent. So these are the folks that participate in these groups and who participated in our research. So with that, what you're looking at here is a list of the motivations that we asked people to uh, indicate on a scale from strongly agree to strongly disagree um, how they, they felt about these statements. So what I am showing is only those responses of strongly agree. So you can see that more than 50% of people um, in those top three statements, I want to help protect or restore aquatic ecosystems, I'm concerned about water quality issues and I want to contribute to scientific knowledge. Those are the top three reasons that people um, were most strongly agreed with um, overall with why they got involved in volunteer stream monitoring. And from there, you can see um, less people uh, indicating they strongly agreed with those statements, but other things that were um, you know, right around the 50% range is concern for fish and aquatic life, participating in scientific research, concern for water quantity and flows. Um, so as you can imagine with stream monitoring groups, um, many of the motivations revolving around, um, around water resources. But also we see spending time outdoors and in nature. We do see some people who, who indicated that they identify with the place, getting at that idea of place attachment. Um, and participating with, with family and friends. So we also looked at motivations. This is going back to that idea of initial versus long-term motivations um, of new versus experienced volunteers. And we saw that new volunteers being those that began in 2018 or 2019. Again, I'll remind you that we administered the survey in the summer of 2019 we're most motivated by a desire to help protect or restore aquatic ecosystems. Whereas we found that those experienced volunteers who had at the time of the survey, three years of experience or more, were concerned about fish and or other aquatic life. Um, and we could speculate why this difference may be. Um, you know, again, that idea of helping, uh, helping the environment versus potentially a deeper concern for what's actually in the stream. And we asked volunteers to rank their number one motivation by uh, uh, their number one, two, and three, excuse me, motivations. Um, and we split this up by country. So in the United States, we see that most folks are concerned about water quality issues. In Canada, most folks said their number one reason was helping protect or restore aquatic ecosystems. And again, in New Zealand, similar to the US, a concern for water quality issues. Now the second and third motivations, what you'll notice is that number two spot flipped for the each country. So this is the number one, and you'll see that the number two reason in the United States and in New Zealand, that number two reason was protecting or restoring aquatic ecosystems, whereas in Canada, it was concerned for water quality issues. And we see a greater divergence in that third, uh, third ranking between the countries. Um, you know, in the US people wanting to participate in scientific research. In Canada, wanting to learn more about local water resources, a lot of these groups were grassroots organized. So potentially that could be uh, an influence on this motivation. And in New Zealand, there were three that tied, spending time outdoors, participating in scientific research and a concern for aquatic life. Getting at that place attachment piece, um, this, is, this is showing folks responses to specific statements meant to measure place attachment for their site. So I'll direct you to the top two statements there. This site means a lot to me and I am very attached to this site. As you can see, if you're looking at the dark blue and the light blue, those are the positive side of the scale. So for the first statement, more than 80% of people 
were on the positive side, meaning they agreed that that site meant a lot to them, displaying some sort of attachment to the site. Um, and more directly, when asked if they're attached to the site, we see about 50% of folks saying, yes, uh, you know, I, I respond positively that I am attached. Um, when asked about changing the site, you know, monitoring at the site is more important than somewhere else or substituting the place um, for some other monitoring site, you see more, we see more neutral responses indicating that um, potentially, you know, people like the site where they are, but if they were asked to go somewhere else, I think this just speaks to their desire to remain involved in volunteer water monitoring. Um, and finally, those bottom two, you see, I feel no commitment to this site and I do not particularly like this site. I'll direct you to the dark gray and the purple. Those are the, the negative side, the disagree and strongly disagree. And if you um, look at the way in which these statements are phrased, they are phrased negatively. So what this is really saying is these people do feel a commitment to their site and they do like their site. So again, just getting at that idea of um, these, these volunteers really do have some sort of attachment and some sort of connection to their monitoring sites. I won't unpack this completely. This is a, a graphic display of a factor analysis that we ran on the, on the list of motivations. And what this does is it groups motivations that load together. Um, so statements that are, are related and that had similar responses are loaded together. And what we saw here that I would like to point out is overall the, the top component, that number one component that explains most of the variance in motivations was a concern for water resources. Now we might expect that for water monitoring groups, but what we saw is the second, um, the second most influential factor, if you will, was place attachment. And so this just goes to show that you know people people do get involved in community science because of this connection to a place. Um, and and we'd like to think about what that might mean for involving more people um, in these in these community monitoring groups. Um, I thought I'd also share some snippets uh, from the interviews that I did with folks. Um, this particular volunteer from Canada saying that the site's special to them, you know, getting at that idea of place attachment, um, feeling like they're going to a cathedral to commune with nature. You can feel the emotional connection here. This person in New Zealand saying that they want to protect what they have. They recognize their water quality is pristine and they don't want to let it go backwards. Um, and preserving that for future generations. This person from the United States recognizing there's high nitrates and phosphates um, and, and wanting to bring public attention to that, uh, educating folks in their local community and getting at that idea of social diffusion of knowledge and sharing within social networks. And finally, this person from Canada saying they feel ownership and pride, and also they're able to drink out of their stream and wanting to keep it that way um, and, and wanting to be protective of that stream. So in conclusion, most people being motivated by wanting to help protect or restore aquatic ecosystems, um, a concern for water quality, um, motivations being very similar across countries and programs. Also seeing that place attachment does play a role in volunteers' motivations. And from my personal experience as a volunteer stream monitor now, um, I'm sorry, as a volunteer coordinator now, in this turbulent time that we are all working through, um, getting outside and in nature has become an increasingly important motivation, as well as doing something that folks enjoy and supporting um, organizations and places that they care about. So that's just a little anecdote from my personal experience as a volunteer coordinator um, and wanting to um, people wanting to get involved in things that can help us all navigate this challenging situation. So. With that, I would like to just, here we go, quickly thank these following people for their contributions. My research committee, our project collaborators, all the groups and the volunteers that participated. Um, I think I'm coming towards the end. I don't know if I have time for questions now, but I would be happy to answer them via email if folks have questions. So thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah, you have uh, about a minute and a half for questions. And uh, just a reminder, everyone, that if you have questions, put those in the Q&A section of uh, the event space. And 
Um, right now we have one, but if you have additional questions for Rachel, uh, feel free to ask them and we should have a little bit of extra time at the end of the session uh, to check back in with some of them for all of us. So uh, Rachel, what's one way you would use the results to improve volunteer stream monitoring programs? That's a great question. Um, part of what we were hoping to do with this study is really to give back to the monitoring groups that participated um, and, and help them to understand why their stream monitors got involved with these programs. Um, and from when, when thinking about reasons why people initially get involved first, continue to remain a, a stream monitor, um, there's this uh, uh, observed um, connection between people's initial motivations being met. And so I think what this research does is inform the reasons why people do get involved and programs can focus on trying to achieve um, and help volunteers uh, meet those motivations um, in, in why they became involved in these programs. So I think that's the real takeaway here is thinking about why people get involved and, and structuring programs in a way to help, to help meet those motivations. Thank you for the question. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. And uh, we'll move on now to our next presentation, 